I feel very much like I'm among friends here because the Chancellor, the President, and Dr. Goldblum have all been friends of mine for a very long time. First, let me say how extremely pleased I am to be awarded this title, this degree. I am truly honored to be given an honorary degree by the outstanding university in Canada. And may I say, as someone also with a doctorate, I'm tickle pink to be here with everyone who's getting a PhD, because I know what you went through. <laughs> and so to each of you receiving your graduate degree today, I want to congratulate you on what is really one of the truly great accomplishments of your life. I know how hard you've worked, and you deserve all the praise you're going to get today. To the parents of today's graduates, many of whom are here, I'd like to offer some words of encouragement. The day is close when your son or daughter will finally be off the family payroll. <laughs> a question I used to ask cabinet ministers after they'd been in a portfolio for only four to six weeks was this. When you leave your portfolio, what will you have accomplished that will enable you to say that you truly made a difference as the minister in that portfolio? I might comment parenthetically that it's quite surprising how few people are ever able to give a clear answer to that question. To today's graduates, the corresponding question is, when you die, what will you have accomplished that will enable you to say that you truly made a difference. And I don't mean a difference at work, no matter how high up the academic or corporate ladder you go. And I don't mean a difference in the lives of your family and friends. I mean making a difference in the lives of your fellow citizens. All of you now have an outstanding education from a university with a fabulous reputation. You all also have the talent and drive to make a significant contribution to this country. And I urge you, indeed, plead with you to do so. Choose a cause, an issue, a problem, a segment of society which you truly care about. Choose something which emotionally hits you, which raises your passion. Don't worry if the choice doesn't matter to other people. This is not about impressing others. It is about you achieving the inner satisfaction which comes from doing something that really matters to you personally. Let me give you two examples from my own experience. In 1982, I was asked to create a task force on Atlantic fisheries because Canada's entire East Coast fishing industry was essentially bankrupt. Interest rates had risen to 18% as they had in the early 80s, and none of the companies could any longer afford to make payments on the loans they had borrowed from the banks. At the time, I was deputy clerk of the Privy Council and in line to succeed to the top job in the federal public service. When I stepped down to put together and then chair the task force on Atlantic fisheries, the media assumed that I had been demoted. In their mind, particularly the Ottawa media, in their mind, there was no rational reason why I would leave a job at the very center of the federal government to work on something that they knew nothing about and cared less called the fishing industry in Atlantic Canada. What the media did not know was that I had a very emotional reason for making my decision. As David Goldblum said, most my, most, all of my family members, both of my parents are Newfoundlanders, and my father had grown up in a Newfoundland outport. Fishing had been the lifeblood of all of the, my father's side of the family. To help save this industry, and the tens of thousands of jobs associated with it meant to me that I had an opportunity 
to make a real difference. The task force ended up carrying out the most successful restructuring in Canadian history. We saved 40,000 jobs and most importantly, governments and, and banks eventually got every dollar back that they put into the restructuring. I got enormous, enormous personal satisfaction out, out of this. Even though absolutely nobody outside of my immediate family could possibly understand my passion or why I had done it. Opportunities to make a difference will also arise for you if you keep your eyes open and your mind focused on the things you really care about. When they do, take advantage of these opportunities. Put the education you've learned to work on making a difference. And I can tell you, based on my own experience, these things are likely to end up being the most satisfying things you do in your life. Let me give you a second example. Shortly after I took early retirement from the Senate, Prime Minister Harper asked me to create and chair the Mental Health Commission of Canada. I agreed to do this even though the job would be essentially full time and even though I had told the Prime Minister that I would do it as an unpaid volunteer. I did so because for nearly 10 years, I had been the mental health advocate for a sister who suffered from severe depression. I had firsthand experience of the need to reduce stigma associated with mental illness and the need to dramatically improve mental health services. I unfortunately had first-hand experience of the emotional impact on a family of attempted suicide. And I suspect that every single one of you graduating today knows someone, a neighbor, a fellow student, a friend, who is suffering from mental illness. The problem is all around you. Consider the results of a recent survey at a group of major Canadian universities. 87% said they felt overwhelmed and exhausted by the things they needed to accomplish. 62%, close to two-thirds, said they felt very lonely and sad. 52% said they felt overwhelming anxiety. And 34%, a third, said that they felt so stressed that they found it difficult to function. And 7% said that they had seriously considered suicide. Sadly, some of your fe fellow students in the last year did die by suicide. As startling as these numbers are, they are, they are similar at every single college and every single university in Canada. So I ask you to reflect for a moment on the students you know who are struggling from stress, anxiety, or depression. Think how lonely and isolated they feel. Think about how much help you could have been by offering them your friendship, by listening to their problems, and by being supportive in their time of need. This illustrates what I mean by making a difference in the lives of your fellow Canadians. In the years ahead, I strongly, strongly urge you to reach out and help those family members, friends, and coworkers who are struggling with mental illness. And there will be many of them. One in four Canadians will be affected by a mental health problem sometime during their, during their lifetime. The personal satisfaction you will get from helping people who are struggling with a mental illness will be enormous. It will help you say near your life's end, yes, my life truly made a difference. To help you start down this path, I ask you to go to a website, notmyselftoday.ca, notmyselftoday, one word, dot ca and sign the pledge which is focused on helping improve not only your own mental health, which is critically important,
but also on helping eliminate the stigma faced by people living with a mental illness and on urging governments to treat mental health and mental health services with the same seriousness that they treat cancer or heart disease. With your help and with the help of tens of thousands of Canadians like you, we will build Canada's first national mental health social movement. We will do for mental health what the breast cancer movement has done for breast cancer. We will build a movement that will aggressively attack Canada's latest, Canada's last taboo. Together, we will make a difference. Congratulations again on receiving your de degree today. And after this is over, go out the door and have one really awesome party. Thank you.